Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the second shelf and to the second installment, so to speak, um, of my Women's Prize for Fiction Longlisted Books Review. I didn't know I don't know whether that makes sense. Anyway, <laughs> it's the second video where I review uh four more books of the Women's Prize for Fiction, the long list. Uh, I will leave a link to my original reaction video down below and also to the previous uh video in which I reviewed three books, uh Sorrow and Bliss, The Exhibitionist, and uh The Bread the Devil Need. And I also talked about a fourth book that I hadn't finished then. Uh so I don't call that a review. So it's those three. And I have four more now um and four more next week because I'm I'm almost done, <laughs> so I will be done in time because I, as you know, I plan to read the whole long list before the short list is announced on the 27th. Um, okay, the four books uh, for this batch um, is the first one I already read some a little while ago because it's the Louisa Edrick. Uh, the Sentence, which was published um, earlier this year. And if you remember, maybe if you follow me for, um, have been following me for a while, then you might remember that last year um, I had the author spotlight, my yearly project where I focus on one author and read all uh, her work in chronological order. And that was Louisa Edrick. And I did that together with Terry uh, from Miss Terry B. And this one was kind of an uh, an afterthought because it was published when we were already done, but we wanted to continue. So <laughs> a lot of information that you really don't care about. You care about the book, isn't it? Um, so this book is um, set. I'm trying to, yeah, <sighs> because it's a little bit floppy. Um, this book is set in the present time in Minneapolis in a bookstore owned by a person called Louise. She doesn't play a big role in the book, but it is clearly the author's bookstore, um, which is, you know, kind of quirky. It, it doesn't, it, it, it's not um, that, like I said, Louisa plays a big role, so it's just something. Uh, but the main character um, is a woman who has just been released from prison, and we learn in the first couple of pages why she was in prison, um, and she, in prison, she started to read and started to be really grabbed by books. And so she finds a job when she comes out of prison in this bookstore. Um, but then one of the um, regular customers dies, an older lady, she dies. And then the ghost of the lady haunts, haunts the bookstore. Um, there is also... Um, the the new relationship that our main character has uh, with a with a former policeman and the daughter of his daughter so the stepdaughter play a role so it's a family focused and bookstore focused customers and especially the haunting is a big part of the story um i liked it um but i didn't love it i i don't think it's edric's best book ever um but the reason why I didn't get along that fantastically with the book is something that is really a very personal uh, reading preference. I don't like to read now at the moment about the pandemic. It just is not, for me, not something... I, I can't explain why, but for some reason it, it completely shatters um, the... Uh, dispension, suspension of disbelief for me. I, I can't tell you why. It's stupid, but that's the way it works. And the, the 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 Trump era. Then you have also the George Floyd murder, which plays a role. So the 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 very the reference to really uh, things that are happening now. It just didn't work for me. I loved the whole setup with the ghost in the bookstore. <laughs> and that is very typical Edric, how she deals with that. Um, but the, yeah, the topical points, like I said, a lot of people I talked to loved the book for that reason, that it was dealing with 
points, topical points of the now, the pandemic and the George Floyd murder and, and things like that. But I'm I'm weird that way. It just doesn't work for me. So it's, um, oh, I, I also read this, by the way, for the Booktube Prize. And I have to say in the group that I read, the fiction group that I read, this was the best book for me. I mean, it was not a brilliant book, but it was still a good book. And for the Women's Prize, I would say it's it's ranking in the mid midfield. But I'm not done yet. I haven't read all the books. Um, the next book that I read for the Women's Prize was the final, let's go, Final Revival of Op Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. Uh, Donnie Walton's debut novel. This is our author. Can you see this? Yes, here. This is our author. Beautiful picture of her. Um, so she has been a writer for some time, but this is her debut novel. And the book is written in um, sort of transcript tra transcriptions of oral of interviews and by a, a journalist called Sunny who um, talks about this with those people involved uh, back then um, in the history of o Opal and Neff and maybe I should tell you what that is about. Um, Opal uh, is a singer, a black punk singer and she in the 70s she teams up with this um, Irish very English, uh, or very Irish, I not very English, uh, <laughs> from Ireland, um, Neff, and they form a singing duo. And it's very successful. And then for all kinds of reasons that will be made clear in the book, they split. And in 2000, and I think 2016, yeah, it's a, a reunion. And then Sunny, who is also, her family is also involved in some way with this uh, uh, this couple, the singing couple. I mean, they were not a couple. They were a singing duo. I, yeah, I just, I wasn't grabbed by this. Um, and again, the suspension of disbelief didn't work for me. It would have worked if Opal and Nev had been a real duo and this was a fictionalized account of their career or their lives for weird reasons this would have worked for me but the fact that they don't exist it just it, it I, I was not interested in what their lives and their singing stuff and what I would what I want to say what did work for me was the uh, the aspects of race uh, that were in the story, quite prominently, of course, in the story, because Opal is a black woman, and how difficult it is, and the uh, the involvement of this uh, fictional uh, fictional uh, character uh, uh, journalist Sunny, uh, her family uh, history has a lot to do with racism. And that was interesting. That was really interesting and well done. And I liked the writing. Um, I felt that this whole, you know, interview thing was maybe a bit, yeah, uh, uh, too quirky. Just, you know, some... Um, I, I, I liked it, but it was not that I thought, oh, that makes sense from the story. But then again, oral history is something that uh, some authors explore. So that, that yeah, it, it was good, that aspect. But the story of this fictional uh, singing duo, I, it just didn't grab me. I was just not interested. So, yeah, let me let me know, especially with this one, whether you read it. Because I know a couple of people um, uh, I talked to, they love this. The, the this idea of the you know it it tells you something about the seventies but maybe because I'm not that big in music either that that it didn't work for me but it just was yeah okay uh, so I for the the ranking that I have um, for the women's prize it's in the in the lower half so in the in the lower third unfortunately. Um, and then I have two books that I read as ebooks, so I don't have a physical copy. And let me see which one I mentioned first on my list. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the Ruth Oseki, The Book of Form and Emptiness. And I had been planning on reading that anyway, and now it is long listed for the Women's Prize, so that was finally <laughs> uh, because the book came out uh, last year. 
If you follow my channel, you know how much I admire Ruth Osaki's work. I mean, The Tale of the Time Being is a fantastic book, really fantastic. This one, again, was good, good-ish, but not brilliant by any means. So the premise of the book is you have um, a young boy um, who just lost his father um, and his mother obviously, who lost her husband in a kind of a freak accident. Um, and the book, the main theme of the book is how they both deal with grief. Um, the boy at the, in the, when the book opens, the boy starts hearing voices, uh, and not voices just in his head, but things talking to him, books and shoes and stuff. To make a long story short, that's his way, I would say, of dealing uh, with the grief. The mother has a different way of dealing with grief, and I'm not going to yeah, spoil that because it's not revealed right away. And the book is then told uh, from the perspective of the young boy. So I had issues with the uh, because he was like 10 or something. I had issues with the child protagonist that m m it doesn't work for me most of the time, even though a, a, the tale for the time being is also partly told by a young girl. But she was a teenager, and that is already, you know, that, that works better for me than a really young child, 10. And I've, I always feel th these voices are either too grown up or too babyish, and then I'm not interested. It's either I don't believe the voice because it sounds too much like a grown-up, or it really sounds like a 10-year-old, but that's not interesting to me. Yeah, I'm a bad person, I know, but it's just not something that interests me, a voice of a 10-year-old in a novel for grown-ups. <laughs> Sue me if you want. So that aspect, but also I felt that she wanted, the author wanted to pack too much into the book. There is um, some Buddhist teacher uh, that is sort of forced into the novel that I felt was completely superfluous. The fact that both main characters, the mother and the son, suffer from mental illness, because mental illness is also the second big topic of the book, I felt was too much. And the way um, mental illness was then dealt with, especially from the book, yeah, it was just too convoluted for some reason. I, it, it, it was as if Ruth Oseki didn't really make choices as an author. And that's the story I want to tell. That's the topic I want to address. It, it was just too much. And in the end, I felt that I was left with nothing. So it, yeah, unfortunately, because like I said, I really, really love her, but it, this one didn't, didn't quite work for me. So again, this is in the, yeah, the lower half, mid-range, uh, if I look at the books that I have read. And then the fourth book that I've read was quite a surprise for me. It was also published in 2021, yes, uh, in May. And that is Kirsty Cape's uh, debut novel, um, Careless. Um, again, a very young protagonist, a 15-year-old girl. Um, it's her voice throughout the book. And I, some people that I, I talked to about the book uh, qualified it as YA. I, I wouldn't say so because I, I don't think that, you know, Ruth Oseki's book is not middle grade just because it, it's an eight-year-old boy as a main protagonist. And just because it's a 15-year-old um, young woman, girl, it doesn't make it YA. Um, the, maybe because the topics, it's about teen pregnancy, and about living in foster care, because the main protagonist lives in a foster family, has been living there for 10 years after her mom, uh, she doesn't know her dad, and her mom uh, was considered not fit to raise her, and she was placed in a, in a foster family. They seem nice enough, the couple, um, and when um, uh, at a certain point, they also got a, a 
a child, a woman was pregnant, and so she had the the main protect, protagonist, dear God, has a, a younger sister. I uh, for, completely forgot, forgot uh, names, but anyway, and I was surprised by this book uh, because I'm I felt that it was really um, authentic, that the voice was good. Uh, it, it was not new. I mean, teen pregnancy and living in foster care, it's not that this was a completely new topic all of a sudden, but that's not, it doesn't have to be. Um, as long as the story is very strong and I felt that um, the way uh, the pregnancy was addressed and what the parents want and what the the young woman wants that that was quite surprising um, um there was a, a bit of a convoluted aspect because the best friend um is a pakistani a young girl who is um about to have an arranged marriage um they the book when they is 15 and then they are 16 i felt that that maybe was a bit too much to put into one book but i i liked it i thought it was yeah maybe it was not the the very best book i've ever read but the the there was a strong story there and a strong voice so i uh, that was one of the books that that surprised me and it was a debut um and the author by the way is also somebody that's why it's called careless um uh, is a care lever so somebody who was in the care system and then left the system so she knows what she's talking about and you can feel that in in the story and in the voice so careless was yeah i would say mid-range in uh, of all the 16 but much higher um, um than i would have thought just reading the blurb so i i really liked it and i appreciated the book Anyway, these are the next four in the Women's Prize for Fiction long list in my review videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward to your comments. You know what I always say at the end, and I will see you all soon in the next one.